Five years ago, John Wall was a point guard in the prime of his career, a perennial all-star, and one of the most devastating forces on the fast break in NBA history. Down court, behind his back, lays it up, and in! Wall tries, and the left-handed slam! Where's our Tottenham beat going? Got it! Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. By Wall, he's going to easily beat Jokic down the court. Picked off by Wall with a nice steal. Two on one with a great pass to Beal. Now, he can't make an NBA roster, was voted the most overpaid NBA player of all time, and it looks like his only option for playing professionally is by joining Dwight Howard in Taiwan. Jordan Poole, come on. Julius Randle, come on. Let me stop, let me stop. Ben Simmons, come on, man. What happened to Optimus Dime? How did John Wall go from NBA royalty to getting cut by the league at just 32 years old? His journey is one of the most fascinating stories of any player in the last decade. A roller coaster ride of ups, downs, twists, and turns. I'll tell you exactly what happened, reveal how good Prime John Wall actually was, and why a podcast clip might have gotten John banned from ever playing in the NBA again. As a kid growing up in Riley, North Carolina, John Wall seemed destined for stardom. He was ranked a five-star recruit, had offers from every major college, and his high school mixtape made him famous nationwide. But off of the court, John's life was far from bright lights and happy days. In his article, I'm Still Here and A Letter to My Dad, John talks about the daily struggles he faced. John's father was imprisoned his entire childhood. His mom had to work three jobs just to make ends meet, and his family often couldn't afford basic necessities like rent, electricity, or clothes. Still, John loved both his mom and his dad. One day, Wall Sr. was randomly released from prison and the family took a vacation to White Lake. But John soon learned that it wasn't just a happy surprise vacation. His dad had been released because he had been diagnosed with terminal liver cancer and only given 30 days to live. John witnessed his father's tragic demise while on that family trip, and he was only nine years old at the time. The pain from losing his father was too much and John began to lash out. As a teen, he was reckless. He got into trouble and he was kicked off the varsity team in 10th grade for anger issues. This nearly destroyed John's basketball career. But then a tearful phone call from his mom brought everything into focus. John switched schools, reformed his attitude, and put his heart and soul into basketball. He promised to save his mom from the tough streets they grew up on and the endless job she worked to keep them alive. In his senior year, John blew up into a high school phenom, averaging 20 points, nine assists, and eight rebounds. He went to college in Kentucky and joined one of the most stacked teams of all time. His college teammates included DeMarcus Cousins, Eric Bledsoe, and Patrick Patterson, who were all projected first round picks. Even when surrounded by fellow NBA talents, Wall continued to stand out. He led Kentucky at both points and assists, putting up 16 six and two steals per game. Wall still had his moments of anger and was involved in a bit of controversy, but that didn't stop him from his mission to play in the NBA and retire his mom. The Wizards won the 2010 NBA draft lottery and they had a huge decision to make. Remember, at the time, the Wizards franchise desperately needed a player to transform their organization. The Michael Jordan era of the early 2000s was a disaster. Gilbert Arenas brought life back to the city for a few years, but then had a mental breakdown in the 2008 playoffs, and then brought a gun into the locker room in 2009. This effectively tarnished Washington's reputation and forced them back into a rebuild. In 2010, the pressure of an entire city was on that number one pick. So they went with the guy who had the deepest experience dealing with pressure. With the first pick in the 2010 NBA draft, the Washington Wizards select John Wall from the University of Kentucky. When his feet touched down the league, Wall wasted no time making sure he made an impact. He won the Summer League MVP, hit the Dougie in his NBA debut, put up a 19 point, 13 assist, 10 rebound triple double in within his first few weeks as a wizard, and even finished second place in Rookie of the Year. In his first season alone, Wall had a highlight mix better than most players' entire career. John was undeniably a great NBA player. He just needed to develop a jumper and he'd be unstoppable. Wall and the Wizards really started to click after they drafted Bradley Beal in 2012. The next season, Wall averaged 19 points and nine assists, made his first all-star team, and the Wizards made the playoffs for the first time since 2007. In the summer of 2013, he signed a $80 million deal, solidifying his dream of playing in the NBA and retiring his mom and things kept getting brighter. Each of the next four seasons, he made all-star teams, and more importantly, was the key to winning. The Wizards made the playoffs in three of those next four seasons, and Wall even claims that they put the fear of God into LeBron James. In DC? Yeah. At 16, 17? Uh, yeah. We was gonna beat the shot of LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if you do an interview with anybody from the Cavs, there was one team they did not want to see on the East. Which y'all? 
they not want to see us. From 2014 to 2017, he was a top five point guard in the league and started the 2015 All-Star game. He averaged 10 plus assists for three straight years, made an all defensive team, and even shot above 35% from three one year. The best part, John was always on the court. Over that four year span, he only missed 12 games. Prime John Wall was elite. Before the 2017-2018 season, Wall signed a massive Supermax extension worth $170 million over four years. The deal secured John Wall as the Wizards franchise player until 2023. Washington was fully invested on their former number one draft pick, and they believed Wall would continue to dominate for years to come. Even John thought he would retire with the Wizards. Then everything fell apart. Injuries started piling up. First, it was a shoulder injury, then lingering knee issues, then a bad left heel, and shortly after recovering, John tore his Achilles after slipping at home. Like Brandon Roy, Grant Hill, or Derrick Rose, the injuries totally ruined the trajectory of John's career. John spent months off the court rehabbing. He'd make a return to the NBA, play a few games, then get injured all over again. But his darkest moment came in December 2019. While nursing his leg injury, Wall lost both his grandmom and his mom in a matter of months. It really touched your heart, didn't you? Things got so bad that he contemplated suicide while recovering. Uh, darkest place I've ever been in. I mean, at one point in time, I thought about committing suicide. You know what I mean? Just tearing my Achilles, uh, my mom being sick, my mom passing, my grandma passed a year later. All this in the midst of COVID at the same time. Wall missed the entire 2019-2020 season, but his redemption tour would soon come. Except all of a sudden, the Wizards weren't interested. In December 2020, they traded him for a package around Russell Westbrook. Ten years of giving his blood, sweat, and tears to Washington. Gone in an instant. It was betrayal. Still, Wall looked forward to his new home. The Houston Rockets looked stacked with Cousins, Oladipo, and Harden, and Wall looked like the piece they needed to make a deep playoff push. But Harden and Wall only played six games together before James demanded a trade and sent Houston into a full rebuild. John went from starting and playing 32 minutes per game to being benched the entire 2021-2022 season. Why'd he sit out? According to Wall, he tried to mentor the young talent, but Rockets management pushed him away. Like, I always wanted to teach them, like, then it got to the point where, like, don't come around. Like, they didn't want me around. Like, I had to work out before they got there. So, like, when they would come in to practice, I'd be at home by 10. Bro, I'd be back home by 10.30, chilling all day. So, That's I'm like, nuts. I'm like, and my kids live in Miami and shit. I'm like, man, I can't be here. John stopped going to games, traveling with the team, or attending practices. The franchise wanted to focus on their young talent, and they wanted Wall gone until they could trade him. The feeling was mutual. Here's Wall on his experience in Houston. Trash. I don't know. I know beyond trash like this clip went viral and may have been the final straw in wall's career wall was given a chance to revamp his image and take a diminished role on a playoff team he was traded to the clippers in july 2022 wall was healthy guaranteed minutes and was playing with a veteran squad but wall struggled coming off the bench all the injuries sapped his speed and explosiveness and he simply wasn't a good enough shooter to make up for that loss john shot barely 45 percent from two and under 30 percent from three for reference, Russell Westbrook shot 54% from two and 35% from three in the same season. Wall posted a negative 1.2 box plus or minus. In January, he suffered a minor abdomen injury and the Clippers decided that they had enough. They traded him back to the Rockets, the team he called beyond trash just three weeks earlier. The Rockets obviously cut him. And since then, he has been unable to find an NBA roster spot. Prime John Wall seemed destined to be a perennial all-star, one of the most exciting point guards to play in NBA history, and a first ballot Hall of Famer. But then injuries destroyed his career, and he was never able to get back on track. In a matter of years, he went from being a top five player in the NBA to the worst contract in NBA history. Some may laugh at how things ended with the Rocket situation, but he's gone through so much adversity in his life that you gotta respect his story. John Wall is 33 years old and may not be banned like OJ Mayo is, but definitely forcibly retired from the NBA. Even if we never see him back in the league, I'm just glad to see him happy, healthy, and hooping with NBA talent. It's incredible how much can change in just a few short years, but at least some things stand the test of time.